Libertarian Counterpoint. I am James Just. With me is author extraordinaire, Mr. John Cameron. And John, it's been a long week already, and it's only Thursday. So, yeah. It's almost Friday. It, it's, it's been a tumultuous week. By the time week. you wake up at noon tomorrow, it'll be, oh, no, that's right. You, you I'll be here. Yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. Be here. Anyway, we're, we're talking about tonight, we're going to start with the freedom to be offensive, because we had a, mm -hmm. there was an incident early, early this week with Trump again, where, I don't know, it, it, is it an attempted assassination attempt when someone doesn't actually get to attempt to the assassination, mm -hmm. or is it a foiled plot? Or, or when, when somebody attempts to assassinate them before they try to assassinate uh, someone is else. Is that a foiled plot, or is that an assassination attempt? Well, you know, it depends. Did they stash the guy in the bushes with a gun just to prove they could find somebody? <laughs> I don't trust <laughs> that's anything a, That's now. a new one, John. I haven't thought about that one. I don't one. trust anything now. I mean, I mean... The idea that somebody could bear crawl across a roof within perfect vision of the sniper whose job it was to prevent people from bear crawling across the roof and only get shot after he took a shot and there's not some kind of skullduggery going on. Yeah, no? it's, it's... So anyway, um, yeah, but say so shot at some guy who was hiding in the bushes who didn't like Trump and you look at him and you can tell just by looking at him, poor guy's a wackadoodle. Yeah, you know. Yeah, these are these, yeah. and which is interesting. We're so we're going to talk about rhetoric, and those are the people. It's the, the heated rhetoric we are experiencing these days mm -hmm. doesn't affect people like you and me, mm -hmm. right? It, well, it doesn't affect anybody except for the wackadoodle. Well, the wackadoodles are listening to the voices in their heads. If people are going to be fomented into uh, illegal, violent acts, then then they're not um, mentally sound enough to have a driver's license or, or any of the other things that adults have. And if you let yourself be led around by a ring in your nose that you let somebody put in it while you're watching them, you're not an adult, you're a child. You're children. Yeah. And so, well, speaking about children, Ron, this is actually going to bring up our, our, our first real story. <laughs> the New, New Hampshire Libertarian Party, mm -hmm. I think make my job hard. These guys really do. Uh, they shared a meme type of thing about the same type of thing we heard about people missing, you know, about Kamala Harris, which yeah. kind of essentially... Why did not somebody shoot her? Some, that she type should be of, shot. That, yeah, yeah. The type of crass, juvenile yeah. thing that political parties should be above, mm -hmm. right? Especially those that want to maintain credibility above the fray. Mm -hmm. And... And they did not. Hmm. As usual, the activists in New Hampshire are the, the, disconnected from the rank and file of the, the Libertarian the, the, Party. The MAGA Libertarians. No, these people are. These, these people just, they're trolls. They're, they're online they're, trolls they're, who somehow have gotten. They're Libertarians in name only. Yes. Basically. Yeah. They're Libertarians in name only, and they're online trolls, and they get Kinda off like on the trolls. They're, uh, they're linos instead of rhinos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really. And, yeah. and they're. They get the emotional reaction. They get an emotional reaction from other people having a negative reaction to what they say online. Mm -hmm. They get their jollies. Is, yeah. 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 Is it, I was trying to be a little more pleasant about that, John. They're jollies. They get, yeah. That's how they get off. Yeah. Yeah. And the, because they have no social lives. <laughs> and the worst part about this is, John, for those of us who try to present a respectable, responsible libertarian party, it makes it very hard because we like to call out this kind of ill, bad behavior. You know, I spent two weeks at the state fair after the first uh, Trump assassination attempt, mm -hmm. and the things um, people who do not support Trump were willing to say to me, a mm -hmm. stranger standing in the, you know, that is unoffensive considering to the stuff that these people were telling me, right? Mm -hmm. it, these people would have been very yeah, happy the, had Trump the, been hit. The TDS is going on, the Trump derangement syndrome. It's weird because there was Bush derangement syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. And now there's Trump derangement syndrome. And I thought that the Bush derangement syndrome was pretty sick. Yeah. But the the uh, and again the guy's an idiot. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I know we're never none of, don't don't confuse anybody here for defending Trump. No, That's not no, going to happen. I I. <laughs> And you just can't have uh, lawfare, and you just can't have censorship. And he's the, he is the victim of both of those things, yes. which is the only, the only uh, right 
The only flag he can fly is he is definitely being victimized by censorship and by um, um, lawfare. And we just can't have that in the country. We just can't have it. Yeah. No. That makes us a banana republic with rotten bananas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it, it continues on. It's not just the Libertarian oh, Party. Oh, Elon Musk thing. Elon oh, Musk is man. now in trouble again because he happened to share one of those type of posts well, that he, were not. He, he, and he apologized for it. He said, I should know better than to just tweet something out without context. I said, why isn't anybody trying to assassinate um, Biden or Harris? And it was like he expected people to think, right, about it. That <laughs> his comment was his comment was really about the overheated rhetoric towards Trump. Yeah, and and it was an, in an artful and well, he of all persons should know that it's going to be deliberately misinterpreted yeah. by people yeah. who want it. And, and he, he took should it down know better. and apologized, but now he's evil again. But ever since he refused to be censored, ever since he whacked seventy five percent of the workforce at Twitter. And it made absolutely no difference in in the performance of the product. And they're saying, you know, Twitter's dying. Twitter is booming like crazy because it's the only place that isn't censored out there. I mean, there are some smaller. I guess Noster is one, and hopefully it'll take off. And there's a bunch of other uh, social media out there. But it, you got a target on your back anytime you use one of those because the the CIA and NSA and FBI are just they're salivating over those because they believe somehow that the, the you know, right-wing people are going to revolt and kill everybody. Which is interesting yeah. because that's the type of thing that actually, you know, we've talked about, next week we'll talk a little bit about, you know, um, every action has an equal opposite reaction. Mm. Is They're actually creating, people ask me, you know, why are people supporting Trump? And mm -hmm. my answer is you. Yeah. You're, you're the reason people are supporting yeah. Trump. Yeah, you're, you're so Looney Tunes. And you don't realize you're so Looney Tunes that people are looking at you going, well, if you believe that stuff, being a right-thinking person, I'm not mean say left or right, being a person who has sanity, I should probably go support the other guy because what you're talking about is crazy, crazy yeah. talk. And this is the condition we have set up, uh, John, is that we now have at least half, if not more, of the support Trump has and Kamala Harris has it's not because they support Trump or Kamala Harris. It's mm -hmm. because I can't stand that other person. Yeah. And so when someone gets elected, they don't have any mm -hmm. mandate. What they have is I'm not them. Yeah. yeah. But yet they're going to act like they have a mandate. No, no. Well, and, and, and you know what people forget is in, in the last election where, where uh, President Trump lost. And let's not even go into the burying the Hunter Biden stuff or the fake Russian files that they came up with or the collusion on the part of the CIA or FBI. Um, he got more votes than, than Obama did when Obama won in a landslide. So if the population hadn't grown, <laughs> depending on how you look at the voting population, but we won't go into that now, um, then a, an awful lot of people voted for the man. And they voted for him for that very reason, that, that um, the, the, the hatred that's going on and the skullduggery that's going on against him just can't be... The hatred, I'm fine with. Hatred doesn't hurt me. I've been hated before. I kind of dig it on occasion. <laughs> but the skullduggery, you just can't have that in our country. You just can't. No. Hey, well, speaking of skullduggery, Propositions 2 and 4. Mr. Richard Fields has some thoughts on, on Propositions I'm, I want to hear the four. report from the Fields. So I, I like listening to it. Let's see yeah. what Richard has to say about Proposition 2 and 4. Hi, this is Richard Fields with this week's report from the fields. You'll be happy to know that I will not bore you with the recent televised masochistic comedy. I mean, presidential debate. The invited candidates and the moderators all discredited themselves by not once bringing up the one existential issue in the United States today. That would be how the candidates would fund their various giveaways and tax cuts as well as the previous $35 trillion in accumulated debt for previous boondoggles. A vote for either Kamala or the Donald is a vote for dumb or dumber, or vice versa. The only sensible thing to do is to not vote, or to throw away your vote on a third-party candidate. 
And the only third party candidate talking any sense at all is the LP's Chase Oliver. There is a reason to go to the polls, though, or mail in your ballot. I guess no one in California actually visits a voting booth anymore, and that is to vote yay or nay on 10 ballot issues. A vote there could actually significantly affect your life and financial future. And some of those votes might actually be close enough for your vote to be meaningful. Three of those issues could significantly affect your financial well-being. Proposition 2 would okay the issuance of $10 billion in state bonds to be spent on schools. Predictably, this bond proposal is being championed by those who would directly benefit. The California Teachers Association, the California School Nurses Association, and the California Building Industry Association, which would get the union construction work. It's opposed by the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. The cost of primary education in California has increased 40% since 2018. By contrast, the Consumer Price Index has increased by 25%. Education is already getting a disproportionate share of the newly created Federal Reserve funny money. If educators really want to spend more dollars on actually educating students, the place to find those dollars is by reducing administrative overhead, not by borrowing more money. Proposition 4 would authorize $10 billion in bonds to benefit the environment and climate. It would cost taxpayers an additional $16 billion in interest before the bonds are paid off. The proposition vaguely claims the money would be spent on water, wildfire prevention, and other environmental projects, but the spending would be audited. The place to start with water projects is to stop tearing down perfectly good dams. The way to curtail wildfires is to transfer timberlands to private timber companies whose motivation would be to make sure their timber can be harvested rather than reduced to ashes. The bond measure, this bond measure is little more than a feel-good proposal that would benefit climate fearmongers with a slush fund. Predictably, it's supported by those who direct benefit, or directly benefit, including the Nature Conservancy, Clean Water Action, and National Wildlife Conservancy. The money is coming from Save the Redfoods, Redwoods and the Semper Virens Fund. It's opposed by the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Probably the worst proposition on the ballot is Proposition 5. It would reduce the majority needed for local bond approval measures from two-thirds to 55%. Predictably, it's backed by those who would directly benefit by the passage of more local bond measures, including the California Democratic Party, the California Teachers Association, and the California Professional Firefighters Association. It's 100% funded by Mark Zuckerberg. Yes, the same Zuck of Facebook who publicly admitted recently that he actively censored your Facebook posts. Interestingly, it is opposed by the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Women's Veterans Alliance, and received funding from the California Association of Realtors. This is the easiest no vote of all the propositions. That's this week's report from the fields. I'm Richard Fields. See you again next week. Thank you, Richard. Bonds, bonds, bonds. Money, money, money. What they don't tell you, John, in those bonds things is that's uh, $10 billion or whatever it is plus interest. Hmm. And, and they that, don't tell you that the money never ends up being spent on what it's supposed to be spent on. It gets siphoned off into... Uh, um, Unions into politicians' pockets indirectly uh, into um, interest, as you talked about, and um, pensions for public employees and all the rest of that stuff. And it's just money that's taken from the taxpayers and from our grandchildren and uh, passed back and forth until 90% uh, of it scraped off and then maybe a tenth of it will go to what they loosely define as the goal of it. Because yeah. that's the thing, John, for, God, I've, God, I've been paying attention to most, to, 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 uh, for longer than most, right? I started early, like at 14, 15, started paying attention to these things. 
So like for 40 years now, yeah. I've been paying attention and I've seen bond after bond proposed and passed claiming that this will fix all of our problems and yet none of the problems are fixed. Well, fix is the right word, but the fix is in. It's not fixing the problems. It's the fix is in. Yeah. Yeah, so the I'm historical a accuracy. Flash in my eye, I apologize to the population yeah, for so the story, my fingers. The historical in my accuracy eye. of these things, John, just makes you wonder why would we pass these things? They've mm -hmm. never done what they've proposed they're going to do. No. Nope. You know, high speed rail is the last one, right? It was a complete what is lie. That, $200 billion now? Oh, and it's what ridiculous, right? Yeah. It's $30 billion, which was a lot of money back then. Yeah. Right? And, and now it's pocket change. Now, now that's one seventh of what they've already spent, and they've got to spend another. Hundred billion or something, yeah. so people can can go from nowhere to nowhere. Fast. Yeah, go, hey, they can go to Merced, to, well, from Merced to somewhere, or from yeah. somewhere to Merced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Barstow to Merced. Bar Merced Barstow to Merced. At, at, that's a scenic view trip there for you. Oh at yeah. A, yeah. At night it's not bad. <laughs> we'll talk about some scenery. See lots of stars. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll talk about some scenery here. Yeah. Montana has some good skies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but what they don't have is good politics. But maybe they've got a good judge here or there mm. because the Democrats are worried because the Montana High Court ruled that the Green Party candidate will not be removed from the ballot Yeah, because the Democrats were trying to get the Green Party candidate kicked off yeah. the ballot and, and the judge says no yeah. he yeah. gets to stay yeah. and now they're worried that the Green Party candidate may make Camilla lose mm. because they assume right which is as third parties the, this assumption is always wrong mm. that the Green Party candidate will only go vote for the Democrat well, I'm, most most of the hardcore Greens are, you know, liberal or not liberal, lefties, and and the Dem, Dems are lefties. There are some, there are a lot of uh, libertarians. They're actually pretty hardcore green, but there a lot of them are green in, in an intelligent way. They understand that capitalists take better care of the land than they own than some unnamed public official. Yeah. Yeah. Well, All you gotta do is look at forest fires in California. It'll show you that. But listen, you're gonna kick their candidate off the ballot, and then you're gonna say, "We gotta come vote for me." Hmm. I hmm. mean, just out of pure spite, well, half they of them had, won't. They had they looked down their rules, and they found one that says, "Cause we don't want them on there." And they <laughs> tried to use that one on the judge, and the judge said, "No, nah, I'm not buying that." Yes, yeah, so, and remember, this is not unique to Montana. No. And this is not unique to Democrats and Green parties. Hmm. Republicans do it the same yeah. um, to the Green Party to libertarians this is routine. oh yeah libertarians have a heck of a time getting on if you're a Republican or a Democrat you can get on a ticket like that if you're uh, a libertarian or another third party candidate you got to get a whole bunch of people's names they go over those names with a fine-tooth comb and they throw out half of them even though they're legitimate if they did that with voting be a whole different election. Well, you remember in New York, you know, when, when Larry Sharp met yeah. the conditions to for the Libertarian Party to become on the ballot, yeah. they changed the conditions. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> sorry, you don't qualify anymore. Yes, you met all the conditions, but those were old conditions. Now you have now new you conditions. Now you have new ones, and it's because we said so. <laughs> because No other reason than because yeah. we said yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we're talking about freedom to be offensive, and I suppose this next story is kind of goes about the same line. Uh, Governor Gruesome down the street here signed a law to ca crack down on election deepfakes created by AI. Now, how are you going to know if an election deepfake is created by AI or created by somebody sitting there in his editing room with video effects? Mm. You know, I can do better than AI can with, mm. you know, sitting in Photoshop. In, sitting, well, not, with, not well, Photoshop, yeah, but yes. Well, you could with uh, what is the, the Mac movie making thing? Yeah. Uh, or Premiere Pro. There's all yeah, kinds of programs. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And you don't need to deep fake this guy because he's a deep fake. All right? He's spending two hundred thousand dollars of taxpayer money for a personal photographer. But so uh, yeah. you know, just Photoshop him out of the picture. But you understand what he's mad at? He's mad because a satire, a commercial made about Kamala Harris mm. that was pure parody and satire mm. and labeled as parody. It wasn't even mm. pretending not mm. to be parody, mm. but it was effective. There's a there's. And so, once it was effective, oh, we've got to stop this. Hmm. But, you know, we have a First Amendment that protects our rights to make fun of our leaders, mm -hmm. especially around election time. Mm -hmm. That's when you actually yeah. need that right the most. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there, I mean, you know, it's macabre humor, you know. I mean, the death of the nation should, if it's going to die, we should at least be able to laugh about it, right? Yeah. But no, there, there's... Uh, 
there, I don't want to mention them by name because they're kind of Looney Tunes and other things, but it's a, a, a kind of an alt-right-ish uh, publication. But they do some pretty good humor, and they, they showed a list of nine uh, deep fakes that they put together about, and they were obviously not, that was like his face stuck. You could have done better with glue and, and, and seller tape. Um, uh, and they were all put-downs of, of the Governor Newsom, um, Gavin Newsom. Um, and the last one, there was nine of them, the last one said, oh, no, and here's another deep fake of him uh, sitting in a restaurant, a fancy uh, Michelin-starred restaurant with a bunch of his cronies while the rest of us were locked down on COVID. Oh, sorry, that's not a deep fake. That, that's actually a news story. Yeah, well, and, and here's yeah. the question. Now all they're going to have to do is claim that this was made by a deep fake. It doesn't yeah. have to be a deep well, They already tried that with the member. They tried that with the Biden thing. Yeah. When, when, when someone showed the, vi the video of Biden being having a Biden moment, oh, yeah. right? A Biden day. What did they call it? They didn't call it a deep fake. What did they call it? it, it they gave it another language to try to, to I forget what it was, a big mm. fake or something. Mm. They, they tried to claim that it wasn't real. Yeah, and it's yeah. all, it was all right wing hocus pocus, yeah. 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 So yeah. really they're trying to eliminate your ability to criticize them. More, they're, they're trying to make you doubtful of everything that you see which yeah. is 1984. And it also yeah. you question... Once they make you doubt what you can see and hear, then their job is done. Well, now yeah. you have to question, can I post this? Yeah. Can I, can I make this? No, can I, can I research, do it. Can I share it? Just do it. Yeah, it's because, you know, there's, there's lots of justice groups out there who would love to take this case to the Supreme Court because mm. this one's not going to stand. Oh, yeah, it's not going to stand. Yeah. Not, yeah. not on your life, which, again, what price are they going to pay for passing yet another law that violates the Constitution. Yeah. None. None. But they're going to spend a lot of our taxpayer dollars defending themselves when they have. They're going to not only use the legions of lawyers. I don't know how many lawyers work for the state of California. Thousands. No, they'll hire tens consultants. Of thousands. They, they won't even use the and lawyers on hire, staff. <laughs> they'll hire high-priced lawyers that are qualified, if it ever gets to the Supreme Court, to argue in the Supreme Court. And they're a couple thousand bucks an hour. And they'll, they'll bill them out for a few thousand hours worth of billable hours, and we're going to pay for all that. Yeah, yeah as always. Yeah. And it's patently unconstitutional on the face. Yeah, not yeah. as applied, Just but on its face. On its face, on its yeah. face. Now, we're talking about AI and the EU. Now, we're going to move over to Europe. And there's, a, there's an article in Money that was qu claiming the EU will strangle AI innovation. And mm -hmm. the reason is, is because the regulations that are too cumbersome for startups. Sure, Microsoft and Google can, can compensate for the regulations, yeah. but you and I, if we tried to go yeah. in and create our own AI company in Europe right now, Apple. it would yeah. simply would not be possible. No, no. Well, and that's, that's it's because they know that they can extort uh, um, the big companies obeying them because they'll threaten their revenue stream in the EU if they don't. But even some of the stuff they recently did, um, their high court in the EU threw out a $200 million fine against Google and said, uh, no, 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 you just can't, you can't do that. That's wrong. So, but the headline that we have on our little cheat sheets here, it says, the EU will strangle innovation in AI. Why don't we just fix it? Hopefully I won't break this, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, we'll just strangle, strangle EU innovation. will strangle innovation. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. I mean, anytime you have regulatory bodies, well, look what they did to Apple. They, they, um, they're, they now have regulations in, and they're trying to pass them here. I don't know if they passed in the EU, but said you have to be able to repair computers, right? And what they don't understand is that they're an integrated unit. And they're much more dependable than the ones in the old days where they actually soldered components together and you could take the back off and pull it out and replace it. The lifespan of those things, like a week and a half, cumbersome, heavy, uh, uh, slow, all the rest of that. I, I've got a, uh, I don't think I can plug, well, I, I'm an iOS guy and I have a beautiful new Air that I just bought. It's, it's perfect. Perfect in every single way. You're not going to be able to get one in, in the EU because it's going to have to have little screws on the back. You can take it apart and replace the battery and the motherboard and all that other stuff. 
You're going to be carrying around an old uh, uh, Osborne transportable. Well, in well, five years, pounds. you may want to replace that screen, and you won't be able to because Apple won't sell you the new screen. No, oh, that's all right. I'll buy a new one. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of people don't want to buy a new one. That's the that's the issue. Well, no, that that's the you know that's fine. But if you want to spend money on a different product, you choose to go buy a different product. Some government regulator cannot, should not, Correct. and will not tell you that all computers you must be able to take a screwdriver to them. Tiny little screwdrivers you got to buy special, and with a magnifying glass. And then once you crack it open. You can go replace this stuff. How many people are qualified to do that? You might be able to. I mean, I, I wouldn't even want to replace the screen on one of these things. Oh, you can't replace the you screen. You can. Right? Well, you can buy really. a kit and do it, but it's not waterproof anymore. And I look at it this way. The, the first laptop I bought, color laptop, that had like, I don't know, it said like 500 meg of hard drive and 2 meg of RAM or something, cost me $1,800 in 1990 something. That's the equivalent of forty-seven hundred dollars today. All right, John, we got two minutes. I want to interrupt you because I know you want to get to this next story: the growing bipartisan push to reform environmental regulations. Even hey. Democrats and the left are now realizing that their environmental regulations get in the way of them wanting to do what they want to so do. So, on major energy and transportation projects, eighty-three percent of them are met with uh, environmental legis environmental litigation. That's a lawsuit by a third party. Most of these third parties are actually NGOs, which are partially subsidized by our own government. And it adds 6.2 years to the life of the big projects and 4.2 years or to the length of time for the project of small projects in 83% of the cases. And, and in almost none of the cases does the litigation actually cause the project to be canceled or eliminated. This is after it's already jumped through all the environmental hoops and it's been approved. So you pull out those environmental hoops, it could cut 10-year projects down to three, but yep. now the 10-year projects are 16-year projects. All right, John, it, I'm getting a signal in there that we are out of time, so we're gonna have to wrap this up. I didn't mean to go on the rant about Apple. No, you could, we were running, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. You know, I, that's why, why you buy Apple is why I don't. So yeah. that's the wonderful thing about the marketplace. Yeah. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you everybody inside. Thanks.